Welcome. Yeah, so in a previous video, I showed you how to find the eigenvalues for a 2x2 two two matrix and then a 3x3 three three matrix. And both of those examples, uh, the matrices, the 2x2 two two and the 3x3, three three, had entries that were strictly real. But then uh, before we discuss the gersh gorin disk theorem to come in the next video, I realized that it's important that we see an example on finding eigenvalues for a matrix with complex entries, and therefore this, eigenvalues of a complex matrix. And so all we're saying is that our matrix A is still an n by n matrix, so a square matrix, but its entries are complex. Now, keep in mind that real numbers are automatically complex, so technically both of the previous examples are examples on finding the eigenvalues of a complex matrix, but yes, yes, uh, we need to see one where there's an imaginary part in the entries. And so then our matrix A can look like this. A two by two example will suffice because uh, the way we're gonna go about uh, finding the eigenvalues is exactly the same as before. That is, we're gonna use this eigenvalue formula only because some of the entries are complex. Uh, our algebra work on this part is going to be a bit tedious as you will see. And so this example is strictly intended to like show you how um, you do this when the entries are complex, yeah? Okay, and also we will um, use the same matrix in the next video, and so we'll need to recall what the eigenvalues of this matrix are, but first let's find them. We know that when we're trying to find the eigenvalues, uh, we do this as I said, we use this eigenvalue formula, and the first thing that we have to do is figure out what a minus lambda times, in this case, i sub 2 would be. And i sub 2 here because, well, we need the 2 by 2 identity matrix since our given matrix is a 2 by 2. Uh, a minus lambda times i sub 2 is going to look like this first. And then upon doing scalar multiplication in this part and then doing the appropriate subtraction, you should find that a minus uh, lambda times i sub 2 is this matrix here. So it is a determinant of this matrix that we need. Um, uh, and then once we find the determinant, we set it equal to zero, right? And again, two by two determinants, the same way as before. So we multiply this and this, and then do minus the product of this and this, right? And so if we do that, we're gonna find that this is a determinant. Uh, first writing what I just said, multiply this and this, that's this part, and then minus this times this, that's this part. Uh, clearly, we need to do some um, foiling or distributing in that part and so I've done the distribution you can pause and look at this carefully I've done my distributing correctly and upon simplifying it we see that it's first going to look like this and then this notice that this here is quadratic and lambda so it's a quadratic equation uh, only instead of x it has lambda in it and in fact you can see that this is quadratic and lambda easier if we foil a lambda from this uh, middle two terms right and this is the constant term in the quadratic and this is like the x squared term so to speak right uh, and of course we shouldn't forget that we need to set this equal to zero right okay so uh, doing the factoring in this part as I said which is factoring out the lambda from both of these guys we can write this here and so we set it equal to zero and see that this is in the form ax squared plus bx uh, plus c where c in the quadratic is all of this and of course as with any quadratic we can use the quadratic formula to solve and in fact here i don't see any other choice but to use the quadratic formula but let's first uh, write the reminder of what the determinant looks like which is this here uh, because i need to get rid of um, what is displayed here so that we could use the quadratic formula okay so the quadratic formula just as before is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a and so it's a lot of simplifying work uh, that remains to get to uh, the two lambdas the two eigenvalues in this case yeah I already know that uh, there are going to be two distinct eigenvalues now since as I said there's a lot of simplifying and algebra work left in this part uh, let's consume it in pieces that we can handle and so let's look at the quantity that's inside of the square root that's this here right and we can simplify this fella first by uh, doing the foiling as required here and then doing the distributing of the minus 4 in this part which gets us to this right and then collecting like terms in this part we can see that what we have is simply 12 plus 24i so what's inside of the square root is um, 12 plus 24i is what we just discovered so let's show that right here 
Now we can do a little bit more simplifying uh, in this part because here we can clearly see that uh, we could take out a 4 from these two and we want to take out a 4 although we can see that we could take out a 12 that is factor out a 12 from these two but I want to factor out a 4 because I know 4 is a perfect square whereas 12 isn't right and so doing exactly what I just said we can say that that was the same as this here right now if we take the 4 out of the square root, we'll have a 2 right here. Notice then the numerator on old parts will have a 2 in it. This guy's got a 2, this guy's got a 2, and then this 4 once outside of the square root will be a 2. And so we can take out a 2 from the entire numerator and cancel the 2 that's in the denominator here. So if we do all that, then, uh, well, first the factoring out of the 2 uh, from the numerator and then the canceling will mean that lambda is this. Okay, I uh, wish we were done, but there's still quite a lot of work to do. Now, uh, here, uh, we have to find the square root of this complex number 3 plus 6i. Uh, in my videos in Algebra 2, I showed you how to find the square roots of complex numbers, and in particular, I have a video dedicated to finding the square root of i. And so the work that we're going to have to do uh, following uh, this step to figure out uh, the square root of 3 plus 6i is going to look much the same way our work did back there in that video where we figured out the square root of i. And so we're going to use that same strategy. So what we're going to do is claim that, well, the square root of 3 plus 6i is just some complex number, which in standard form can be written as a plus bi, and then we square both sides of this, right? And so technically, I've showed you a little something like this before, but I want to repeat it here in context in case you know you find the repetition helpful okay cool so squaring both sides we get this and obviously we have to foil in this part i uh do the foiling very efficiently but you know if you foil and then collect the real parts of this um a plus bi all squared uh the real parts are going to look like this and then the imaginary part is going to look like this now then we have two complex numbers that are equal well two complex numbers are equal if their real parts are equal so in this case if three is equal to a squared minus b squared and if their imaginary parts are equal that is if six is equal to two a b so we write down both of those things very important though um is uh, from the onset, right, when we wrote this down, we know that A and B are real numbers. A and B are real numbers here. That will be very important shortly. Yeah, now this we can uh, simplify a little bit more, so let's do that. And in fact, uh, we want to solve for either A or B. So after we simplify this into this, we want to get B by itself. Uh, and so we know now that B is 3 over A. That way, we can replace this B here with 3 over A, and we have just an equation in A. And so we can solve this equation for A and in turn substitute the value of a here to get to b yeah okay cool uh so this is fairly straightforward algebra first we write this and then we multiply both sides of this equation by a squared and if we do we get the quartic this now the quartic like a quadratic we want to have it equal to zero so we bring this term uh, over to the left and that's that now uh, this quartic here is quadratic in form it's quadratic in form because if i substitute u equal to a squared it would read u squared minus 3u minus 9 equals 0. So it's quadratic in form, but I have a ton of examples on uh, solving equations that are quadratic in form in my Algebra 2 videos, so I'm not going to spend the time to teach you how to solve this here. Watch those videos. What I will do here is just state the result. So the a's that solve this quartic are the four a's, this here, this here, and um, this here and this here. Now, unsurprisingly, these two end up being imaginary solutions uh, for this quartic and they're conjugate pairs. I know that they're imaginary because uh, 3 minus 3 square root of 5 is a negative number. Clearly, 3 square root of 5 is bigger than 3. So this here is negative, and so therefore, this is negative right here also. So we're taking the square root of a negative number in both of these. Now, remember, I said A and B are real numbers, so we have to toss this guy and this guy. We cannot include these two because A and B are real numbers. So the two solutions that work for A are this guy and this guy, because again, here and here, A would be an imaginary number.
and we said a and b are real yeah okay so keep in mind that the two a's that work are 2.2 and negative 2.2 so we can come back here substitute each one so first substitute 2.2 and we find the corresponding b value for the a value 2.2 and then we substitute negative 2.2 to find the corresponding b value for the a value negative 2.2 and so doing precisely what i just said uh, when a is equal to 2.2 we get b is equal to 1.3 and um when a is equal to negative 2.2 unsurprisingly we get b is negative 1.3 ah cool so we're saying then so that i didn't go too fast i didn't do anything here um so we're saying that the a and b here that are gonna allow us to claim the square root of 3 plus 6i are 2.2 and 1.3 positive or 2.2 and 1.3 both negative ah look so you see this here is the same as this here if we just put this in parentheses and write a minus in front of it so technically the two solutions uh, for the square root of 3 plus 6i are plus or minus parentheses 2.2 plus 1.3i because this here is just the minus version of that guy right okay cool so we do that so we see that lambda which we said uh, was equal to, we had it right here, uh, minus 1 plus uh, 1i plus or minus the square root of 3.3 plus 6i is going to now be, well, replacing this here with plus or minus parentheses 2.2 plus 1.3i, right? Okay, cool. So um, this is what I just said. This here is this here because well this here is this guy and this guy and both of them are captured and the plus or minus this guy right okay and this plus or minus clearly is that plus or minus but this plus or minus again is accounting for both of these right okay cool now plus or minus uh followed by a plus or minus is just going to end up being a plus or minus think about why um but if you need help then you can ask me questions and i'll answer so i'm saying here we could just write one plus or minus and it's sufficient so our lambdas are going to be minus one uh plus one i plus or minus what's in the parentheses here cool so let me display just that all right cool so then uh, our two lambdas are this here once with the plus and this here once with the minus and so that is um what did i do in this part yeah i just sh distributed uh the plus or minus so to speak um here and here and then i put the real parts together and then the imaginary parts together uh you can do it any way you'd like once you get here the end is easy to see so as i said one of them is um this here uh with um the minus and so that's this here because i did minus one minus 2.2 and that's minus 3.2 and then it's one uh, i minus 1.3 i that's minus 0 0.3 i and then uh similarly dealing uh with the plus part we see that lambda 2 is this and this video is at its conclusion i hope you enjoyed this and try to remember this example because in our next video on the gersh gorin disk theorem we're going to need to know these two uh, lambdas we're going to need to recall this matrix and um say what the two lambdas are yeah okay cool all right keep watching take care